Hello, everybody. It's such an honor to be with you today. Thank you so much for coming. And I hope that you find something impactful from today's presentation. Uh, the title is The Power of Art, Leveraging Creativity in Civil Society. A little bit about me. I'm an instructor. Sure we are indeed recording. Are we recording? Okay, yes, we are recording. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I'm a teacher, a musician, and a linguist. I studied at Howard University. Not sharing the screen. Okay, here we go. I studied Spanish at Howard University. It's a historically black college in Washington, DC. And I'm currently pursuing my PhD here in Madrid, Spain and translation studies. I'm studying the impact uh, of uh, the profile of the translator on the translation of uh, R&B music. <laughs> so I'm studying translations of R&B songs into Spanish and French and trying to find some correlations between the final product and how uh, the translator prepared for translating those types of specific uh, minority translations translation projects. These are some of my research interests. I like music because <laughs> I'm a musician. Um, I love languages, so uh, linguistic justice is something I'm very passionate about, and uh, I'm developing a language learning program for children using music. I have written a lot of songs and translated a lot of songs over the years, and one of my latest uh, co-writing projects, Snoop Dogg wrapped on. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> what is art? I say it's the expression of creativity through various types of media. Visual, sculpting, painting, photography, fashion, graphic design, interior design, architecture, Literary, prose, poetry, com comic strips, theater, etc. Or it could be performance based, which kind of encompasses all of the previous categories, right? Music, dance, theater, comedy, spoken word. And now we even have um, live painting. So it's very common to see in open mics, speakeasies in the United States, a painter painting live as people are performing to kind of um, embody what musical or poetic performances are, are taking place that night. I think it's a really cool thing. Okay. Art is a universal language that connects with our deepest emotions and memories while taking our minds far from the stress and pressures of reality. Even if only for a moment, this singular quality is what makes art therapeutic and cathartic. In other words, have you ever kind of felt bad or sad or mad, and then you pop on 
a really funny movie, uh, a really beautiful album where you go to a concert or um, you go to an art exhibit. And it's like temporarily you, you stop thinking about what you've been dealing with um, because it's like your brain has focused in on that art. So all the other things that you were dealing with emotionally, they kind of evaporate. So that's really a superpower, I, I think, that all artists possess. Art has a way of influencing us on a subconscious level, often causing us to recall a line, a melody, or an image long after first experiencing them. Creatives who have a specific message to disseminate consider their art as a superpower to utilize to their, to their advantage. And I'm one of them. <laughs> who knows who that guy is right there with the saxophone with all the paint <laughs> on his body? Who is that? Any volunteers? <laughs> yes, haha, <laughs> the great Fela Kuti. Today's discussion, I'll specifically highlight examples of Black artists who use their music and their influence to spread messages, promoting social, social justice from the post-colonial period to present day in the United States. And we will also feature amazing performances from the Gambian context. Because as we know, both the United States Gambia and a plethora of other countries are all within the context of post-colonialism. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later in the chat. Uh, so we named Fela. Who can name another black artist who was or is known for being socially conscious and or culturally empowering with their art? Another question. <laughs> Wow. I'm, I I'm hearing so many names I don't recognize. So I, I'm giving all of you homework. Send me a Facebook message with the names of these amazing artists so I can learn about them. <laughs> you have to mention your people. I have a few on my next slide. Miriam Makiba, Fodai Musa, Suso, Kerry James Marshall, Maya Angelou, Nikki Giovanni, Langston Hughes, Chenua Achebe, Usman Semben, Stephen Lawson, Kasi Namoda, Kehinde Wiley, Prince, Common, Mumu Fresh, Little Sims, Low Village, Nina Simone, Marvin Gaye, Fela Kuti, Yannick Noah. What is post-colonialism? A theoretical framework that focuses on Western imperialism and how it's impacted the development of formerly colonized populations. Within this context, we see art often used as a form of resistance to imperialistic cultural, socio-political, and economic domination. 
So why the United States? Why am I here <laughs> to talk about the United States contribution to this phenomenon? Black Americans are considered by most scholars as a post-colonial population for numerous reasons. Representing a minority of the population and many even possessing indigenous blood, their cultural, economic, and socio-political development has consistently been at odds with those of their former enslavers and colonizers. For example, the drum, a multifaceted instrument used traditionally in several African cultures for musical, celebratory, spiritual, and even political purposes, was banned by enslavers in the United States not long after their arrival to the Americas in fear that it would be used to incite revolts. <laughs> and that is because it did incite revolts. <laughs> in Louisiana and in South Carolina, the drums were used to signal when all of the slaves would revolt against their enslavers. <clears throat> And as a result of that, the drums were taken away and it caused the enslaved persons to become more creative and um, engineer, if you will, other ways to create the same frequencies or similar frequencies using drum technology. So tambourines, bones, which are, for lack of a better term, two thick sticks that you slap together to create uh, percussive sounds. Some people use spoons in the same way. The banjo, which was actually invented by enslaved persons in uh, the, the Americas, and the fiddle. These were light, portable, and they were not seen as a threat to the enslavers. These would be key elements, musical elements, of the foundational styles of American music, Negro spirituals, blues, bluegrass, and folk music. And, and I shouldn't leave out hand claps. Footstomps. I don't know if you can hear my foot. <laughs> I know in my church, uh, where I grew up in North Carolina, we used foot stomps and hand claps a lot because we didn't have drums in our church. Um, and now drums are pretty much in, in every church. But uh, back at that, at, that, at that time in the 80s, it was still kind of, taboo <laughs> to have drums in certain types of churches in like Pentecostal churches they had drums they had all the instruments but usually in Baptist churches and maybe Methodist churches in the black community you only had organs and pianos but now it's much more accepted to have drums and bass and guitars and all of those types of instruments okay the limitations of their environment at that time sparked their creativity and ingenuity and spawned the invention of instruments like the drum set. And most contemporary forms of American music, such as gospel, jazz, pop, rock, disco, funk, dance, soul, R&B, country western, Etc. All of these are, I'll say, um, the children <laughs> of blues and Negro spirituals and all these other styles, early styles of uh, uh, American music, uh, special, specifically Black American music. That's Frederick Douglass right there. He had to say this about Black American music. I've often been utterly astonished since I came to the North to find persons who could speak of the singing among slaves 
as evidence of their contentment and happiness. It is impossible to conceive of a greater mistake. Slaves sing most when they are most unhappy. The songs of the slave represent the sorrows of his heart, and he is relieved by them. Only as an aching heart is relieved by its tears. So that basically gives a glimpse into why certain art forms were created by enslaved persons, namely the blues and Negro spirituals. The music was therapy for them. It was a way for them to take their mind off of what was going on. And at the same time, it allowed them to encode certain messages to their colleagues. And we'll even see as we get into the second portion of uh, the chat today, that it also was used to signal freedom. Informing or warning the listener, we'll see that with the Negro spirituals and with hip hop, or really with all the styles of music, you see a lot of informing the listener, but warning the listener, specifically Negro spiritual, Hope for a promising future. We also see that in Negro spirituals and especially in gospel music, but we can see that in jazz, we can see it in R&B and uh, many different styles as well. Departure from pain and suffering. Also, we see that in Negro spirituals and gospel, blues. A clarion call for unity or solidarity. We see a lot of this um, starting to take shape probably in the early 1900s through the civil rights movement and even up till today. As Blacks began to gain more rights, the music started to reflect the increase in, I'll say, confidence or um, resistance to the injustices that they were experiencing at the time. And a celebration of an homage to culture and or the ancestors. So we have a Negro spiritual is our first example. Go down Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. When Egypt was in Egypt land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard, they could not stand. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell Pharaoh to leave the people go. So that song, we don't know who wrote it, but it is alleged, <laughs> I'll say, that. That song was sung by Harriet Tubman whenever she arrived to a slave plantation to alert all the slaves that she was there to take them to freedom. It's really powerful because um, she's actually called Black Moses because like Moses from the uh, Jewish story, she was attributed with bringing people to freedom. Um, I want to say over 300 people <laughs> she uh, took to freedom by foot, <laughs> which is uh, really amazing. If you've ever seen the Harriet Tubman movies, she was uh, absolutely 
amazing, phenomenal woman. We have the blues. Here's a song called Backlash Blues by Nina Simone. Mr. Backlash, Mr. Backlash. Just who do you think I am? You raise my taxes, freeze my wages, and send my son to Vietnam. You give me second class houses and second class schools. Do you think that all colored folks are just second class fools? Oh, Mr. Backlash, I'm going to leave you with the blues. When I try to find a job to earn a little cash, all you got to offer is your mean old white backlash. But the world is big, big and bright and round. And it's full of folks like me who are black, yellow, beige, and brown. Oh, Mr. Backlash, I'm going to leave you with the blues. Yes, I am. So in this song, we see a lot of different things. So she's talking to the establishment. She is saying basically that Blacks need to be respected and treated as everyone else and not like second class citizens. This was really powerful at the time because as I explained earlier, I would say in the 1800s, we have the uh, last, juncture of slavery. And then at the end of the 1800s, we have emancipation. During this period, uh, Blacks were forbidden to read, to learn how to read, to go to school, etc. So lots of music was created to educate Blacks at that time as well. So when you get into the 19th, uh, 1900s, we're starting to see um, schools being created. I'll say like the last <laughs> maybe 10, 20 years of the 1800s as well, we see the establishment of universities and schools for Blacks. And they're slowly starting to become educated, but they still don't have equal rights. They're still, according to the U.S. Constitution, considered as three-fifths of a person. They're not even considered fully human. So if that is the mindset of the establishment at the time, the government, you can imagine all of the um, negative repercussions that that could entail in their daily life, in their political life, and their social life, in all aspects. So this song represents all of that. And <laughs> it even got to a point with Miss Simone, <laughs> that the FBI uh, was after her and she fled the country. Very intriguing woman. So without further ado, we have uh, our first special performance by the amazing poet, Omar Champion. Please give him a hand. Yes. So here's your mic. Here's your camera. Camera, you feel comfortable? My, I'm good. <clears throat> Am I a bit off? <clears throat> Kenny, please let us know if you have trouble hearing. I think it should be good from here. But just give us I a very thumbs well. up down. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, good thanks, uh, Molly. And uh, of course, our hero there and everyone that is following this uh, very important session. My name is uh, Omar Champion Cham and uh, the first national poet Islam champion of the Gambia. And um, as well, one of the movers, the singers of the arts through the art of poetry, as far as our nation is concerned. Um, before I get into my performance, I just wanted to uh, do a few highlights of the importance of the art as far as our socio-cultural and political status quo is concerned in the form of the Gambia. Uh, we've not uh, experienced certain forms of conflict or a type of war sort of where we use the art as a driver to, to make a change in that regard. But we have uh, experienced a lot of uh, socio-cultural and political deficiencies that has given us the opportunity to use the art as an agent of change, as a tool of advocacy against societal ills from all aspects of life. Anything that has to do with the interests 
of the people, either you are young or old, either you are male or female, we use the art as a form of advocacy to ensure that we speak to the hearts of the people through the use of the art, which comes from the heart directly to another heart as a universal language. So the piece I'm going to perform is called uh, Feminine Pride. Uh, this piece actually um, encapsulates the pain of women and as well as uh, the need to, to basically um, give them the required support and love and care, etc. And I'm dedicating this to all the black women that are out there, much especially, especially um, those that have undergone any of the things that might be highlighted in the piece, uh, to tell you that we the men are actually uh, in love with you and we're here to show you love, to show you value. And the poem reads, <clears throat> I've been given a lot to live for. Little to smile for and much more to die for. But among all this reside the pain of women in hidden throats, a sadness to cry for. The world's most precious gift placed in the coffins of society's carpentry, built in stereotypes, abuse, and exploitations to the highest degree. Their wings tie tightly, they can't fly free. Their bones cross wrongly, blind enough to see, but I've come with a revelation to save a generation. So listen to me attentively. For the dawn of the night has finally arrived to break the barriers, barring the protection of our women, to the power of we men of consciousness of the wrong constructions we want to vandalize, the abuses of rights we penalize, the hidden criminals we televise on the screens of shame and globalize a movement to protect our women in mercy without worry, in empathy without fear. For I spent a decade confused of how I should love you and what I should love in you. And if I do not get the love in return, what else would then do? If I should fancy the pretty face or the beautiful body, the power of motherhood and the cradle you kept me, the way you raise my kids and how that makes me happy, the coldness of my bed and how I strip off your bikini, the skills in cooking in the kitchen and the meals palatability. But believe me, that is why we got it all wrong. For I should not love you for any of this. I should love you simply because you are a woman. Because I felt your tears burning faster than the Amazon fire. I felt your sorrow more worrying than the xenophobia of how you've been torn into a victim of rape, a sex slave, a victim of gender-based violence, sexual violence, early marriage, female genital mutilation, discrimination, any time you want to speak, they shut you up not to give a narration. But woman, speak up and speak aloud. Unveil the pain and let them out. You're not a slave of anyone, not men, not women, not those that believe, not those that doubt. Don't let them cut their bleeds on you. You're not responsible for the emotional doubt. You're bold and you're strong. If you're a victim, you're not wrong. You're beautiful and pretty. I could it with this for quite so long, then place you in the highest ranks of heaven. For that is why you belong. Because if you are a woman, you are naturally a conqueror and a quencher of anger. If you are a woman, you are a noble source of inspiration and indefatigable source of power. If you are a woman, you are a twinkle of light, a glimmer of souls and a heart healer. If you are a woman, you are the custodians of our future the drivers of success where no wills exist, the sparkles of the early morning moon, the most sweetest being that could ever visit the face of the earth. So today we stand as men to protect you. Today we stand as men to remind you of your greatness, to remind you of your value, to show you that we are not rivals but partners in development, to keep cherishing you, praising you, and celebrating you because you, are the beings that bear the best fruits to life. Thank you very much. That was captivating. That was absolutely wonderful. Wow, thank you so much for that amazing poem. Moving along to jazz. This song was popularized by Nina Simone, but written by Billy Taylor. And you can see in here how even the title, I wish I knew how it would feel to be free, is showing the listener a vision of what the future could be like. I wish I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish I could break all the chains 
holding me. I wish I could say all the things I should say. Say I'm loud, say I'm clear for the whole round world to hear. I wish I could share all the love that's in my heart. Remove all the bars that will keep us apart. I wish you could know what it means to be me. Then you'd see and agree every man should be free. I wish I could give all I'm longing to give. I wish I could live how I'm longing to live. I wish I could do all the things that I can do. Gone away, overdue. I'd be starting anew. Well, I wish I could fly like the bird in the sky. How sweet it would be. If I fly, oh, I could fly. I'd soar to the sun and look down at the sea. And I'd sing, cause I know. Yes, I'd sing, cause I know what it means to be free. What it means to be Thank you. Neo Soul, which is late 90s, early 2000s, Brother by Angie Stone. This is a really interesting song. So if we look at the lyrics, she's basically saying that the Black brother needs to be encouraged needs to be treasured, needs to be loved. And this is in an environment where we have a very, very high percentage of black males being incarcerated at percentages that are not equal with those of their white counterparts who are the majority of the country. So this is a very powerful statement she's making in this time in history. He is my king, he is my one, he is my father, he is my son. I can talk to him because he understands. Everything I go through and everything I am, that's my support system. I can't live without him. The best thing since sliced bread, it's his kiss, his hugs, his lips, his touch. I just want the whole world to know about my black brother. I love him. I will never try to hurt you. I want you to know that. That I'm here for you forever, true, because you're my black brother, strong brother. There is no one above you. I want you to know that I'm here for you forever, true. <laughs> he's misunderstood. Some say that he's up to no good around the neighborhood. But for your information, a lot of my brothers got education. Now check it. You got your Wall Street brother, your blue collar brother, your down for whatever chilling on the corner brother, a talented brother, and to every one of y'all behind bars, you know that Angie loves you. You mean so much to me. You give me what I need. I'm so proud of you. I love you for staying strong. You got it going on. Going through thick and thin, brothers, you're going to win. Whenever you're facing doubt, brothers, go work it out. She's basically hu humanizing. Black men who, by many at this time in the history, have been dehumanized by the betrayals of Black American men in, in a lot of movies, TV shows, films, even in music, unfortunately. Gospel 
This song was written by a Methodist minister in the early 1900s, and it became one of the main songs that was sung by Black Americans while they were protesting in the, during the Civil Rights Movement. It became kind of the anthem, if you will, of the Civil Rights Movement. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday, oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. We shall overcome some. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace. We shall live in peace someday. Oh, oh dear. There are a lot of different verses of this. God will see us through. We're going to be all right. We are not afraid. <laughs> and um, those types of songs, they not only take your mind off your problems, but they give you hope. I think that's one of the beautiful things about uh, gospel music is it, it gave African-Americans hope that they could see a brighter day in their lifetime and in the future. Yeah. Beyonce's formation. I am no Beyonce, so I will not be attempting to sing this. <laughs> but I have a few excerpts here that I think are really interesting. My daddy, Alabama, mama, Louisiana. These are both Southern states uh, in the United States. You mix that Negro with that Creole, makes a Texas Bama. I like my baby hair with a baby hair and Afros. I like my Negro nose with the Jackson 5 nostrils. So all those first few lines there, she's basically saying she's proud to be Black. She's proud of her African features and her parents where they're from are states that are known for being in the South and having a, a large contingent of Blacks. We keep going, earned all this money, but they never take the country out of me. I got a hot sauce in my bag swag. <laughs> so her saying she's country is in the hot sauce. Those are all things that she associates with her Blackness being from the South, I can hot sauce, spice, flavor, seasoning. <laughs> Those are all things that we consider a part of African-American culture. I see it, I want it, I stunt, the yellow bonnet. I dream it, I work hard, I grind till I own it. I twirl on them haters, albino alligators. She's talking about <laughs> white people, albino alligators. That's not very nice. El Camino with the seat low, sipping Corvo with no chaser. She's simultaneously saying that she's striving to earn a better life for her family and to make her community proud. Sometimes I go off, I go hard, get what's mine. I'm a star. I slay, okay, I slay, okay. Ladies, now let's get in formation. Let's get our act together. Let's come together. Prove to me you got some coordination because I slay, slay trick or you get eliminated. You just might be a black Bill Gates in the making because I slay. I just might be a black Bill Gates in the making. So she's infusing a lot of slang and a lot of phrases that are hip to really kind of water down the deeper message that's in the song. It's 
and it makes it kind of entertaining. But there's some very powerful concepts in here. You see the affirmation of her Africanness, and we see her calling her community to rise up, to work hard, to be the best that they can be. So this is a very powerful song. What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. My mother, there's far too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know, gotta find a way to bring some love in here today. Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. War is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. You know, we gotta find a way to bring some love in here today. Picket lines and picket signs don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me and you will see what's going on. Hey, what's going on? I want to know what's going on. Oh, what's going on? So this song was written in the 70s. But every message that's mentioned here is, is still relevant today, 50 years later. It's talking about police brutality about young men being killed senselessly, about, about wars. Of course, wars will probably go on until the end of time. <laughs> and we're talking about picketing for rights. Very, very poignant song. And it was actually not played on many radio stations because they thought that it would incite riots. Sound familiar. <laughs> it kind of harkens back to the, the, the anecdote I shared about the drum earlier. The drum was taken away because they were afraid it was going to incite riots. And we have music that's not being played on radio stations because um, they were afraid it would incite riots. We see that a lot with many artists um, during the civil rights period. Um, Nina Simone, a lot of her music was not played on radios, radio stations. And some artists had to leave the country, including her, Paul Robeson, um, Josephine Baker, for these, I would say at the time, uh, controversial political views that they had, but were shared by all of their, um, all of their Black brothers and sisters. And for our final example, we have Kendrick Lamar's All Right. <laughs> I'm not, again, going to attempt to rap. <laughs> but I highlighted a few of the lines that I found very interesting. What you want, a house, a car, 40 acres and a mule, a piano, a guitar, so 40 acres and a mule is specifically referring to what was promised to all enslaved persons after the emancipation. Um, especially we see in the case of some of the enslaved persons who were indigenous, indigenous and African mixed, or just full-blood African. <clears throat> they actually had lands in some instances and the lands were confiscated, confiscated and uh, many of them were destitute and they ended up going into another system that was similar to slavery called indentured servitude. 
where you basically work on a plot of land for a certain amount of years. And after those years, um, after you finish working that period of time, you're either given that land or you're free to go and work anywhere else. But it's basically like slavery, but it, it has an, uh, an end date <laughs> to the enslavement. And that probably ended, I would say, probably in the um, 50s, 60s. There actually, unfortunately, are some people in certain parts of the Deep South who are still working on the land of their um, family worked on as indentured servants. Um, it's pretty much a modern day slavery. <clears throat> but for many of them, they don't feel that they have any other options and that's the only life that they know. So they are happy with that life as it is. Okay, so let me continue. I don't talk about it, be about it. Every day I see cool. If I got it, then you know you got it. Heaven, I can reach you. Pat dog, pat dog, pat dog, my dog, that's all. Big back and Chad. I tra trap the bag for y'all. I rap, I black on track. So rest assured, my rights, my wrongs. I write till I'm right with God. So like the Beyonce song, he's basically saying that what he up with him. He's trying to succeed and do his best so, see, so he can be of help to his friends and to his community. And we hate Popo, that means the police. Want to kill us dead in the streets for sure, inward. I'm at the preacher's door, my knees getting weak and my gun might blow, but we gonna be all right. Like the Marvin Gaye song, Ironically, he's talking about police, police brutality. And I'm at the preacher's door talking about spirituality being a way to find escape and hope that things will get better. So that is my last musical example. And now it's time for another phenomenal presentation from Bright Stars Entertainment. Hi, you okay? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for being here. I am Asen. Um, uh, this is Bright Stars. But amongst us, we have um, someone very special to us. He is a brother and inspiration who has supported us for um, a long time now. He's also uh, a vocalist and advocate. Uh, his name is Barhama Cham. He also um, provide to share a few words. I feel Champion have done a very good introduction. So basically what we do, we are more into performing arts. We sing, we dance, we do a theater, we do comedy, we do and everything that you know has to do with entertainment. Basically our entertainment is based on um, bringing out burning issues that are affecting uh, the society, warning people, um, entertaining them as well. We've had a lot of uh, quite a, lo a lot of uh, songs or drama dramas or scenes or skits that talk about uh, issues that are affecting the society and people that we feel or things that we feel if addressed by stakeholders or the government would help the people of the Gambia and beyond. So basically today what we are going to do is a skit that we had planned. Unfortunately, sometime last year, um, we got in touch with uh, someone, um, she's a Gambian, uh, Mam Tuti, who had plans or promise of, of taking Bright Stars to the United States of America. So we were in the process, but along the line, we found out that it was a scam. So, but we said, if we are going to leave Gambia and go to the United States, what are we going to take? But Bright Stars have been in existence for about five, six years now. And every year, starting from 2018, we decided to come up with a program, a show, a concert 
that is called Rangha Bisap. Rangha Bisap is a local name for sorrel. Now, what does this do? Rangha Bisap, we all know how smooth it is. So there is a concept behind it. It is done or it is brought up to smoothen relationships within Gambians. Because we all know after 2016, everybody or most people claimed ownership of the country. Gambia was almost divided by tribal lines. That was why we came up with Rangha Bissau. So we have a song, you know, on Rangha Bissau with Bahama. So it did this literally to unite people, to unite Gambians. So what we are going to do is a small sketch that would just, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of entertaining so, uh, a sketch sort of. Um, this is what we were supposed to perform if we had gone to America, but we will just give you a small scene of it. And in it, um, we'll also have Hadi who would give us a poem uh, on the celebration of black people. So Bahama, yes. of a boiling steel The good aroma of a boiling steel The good aroma of a boiling steel The time in a magnificent The test will be Lad malutak mama Africa bisi. Lad malutak mama Africa bisi. Then you stop loco, food they pass to take chapunek ni jok loco. Che akanyo stop loco, chapa mat baram dok ni jok loco ganan. Jason, you just son. Can I do go to one we hear? You find in a magan. Ranka be level got you one ye. The children know Yakusi. I'm Ranka be sad. Ranka be sad. Ranka be sad. Ranka be sad. It's an appetite stimulant. So put the bench in the moda. It's an appetite formula. Bang a sip and a chin, but sit the moda. Oh, why have I have a day? Oh, yeah, the day. Oh, I cannot believe this. Seriously, everything we brought here has been bought from us. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We sold all our goods, except for Kujali's double original. Hey, hey, hey. If you people continue like this, be like, I will break someone's head here. Huh. I don't want to. Kujali, whose head can you break? <laughs> Tell us, whose head can you break? But mind you, but I say when I'm about to win. Hey. All of more go on. Hey, mind you, my second name is Bar. I'm not small, so, but I'm skin and nice. <laughs> slim and nice. <laughs> Go, be slim. A man should not be slim. But anyways, come here. Now that you have come to the United States of America, maybe the food you eat would reveal itself. Wait. That's not the point. The point is, I can't wait to get to Serapunda, Banyu, and tell them what my eyes have seen. <laughs> Full moon. Yes. Tell us. Tell me. Hey. What have you seen? Uh, um, that, that tall building. <laughs> they are called skyscrapers. skyscrapers. Exactly. Sky scraper. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, but it's okay. Oh, but aside from the skyscrapers, what else have you seen in the United States? 
Oh my god. Sweet bread. What the ballo? That bread until you boy used to sell at the market. <laughs> oh, you referring to a burger. It's called burger. <laughs> it's called burger. McDonald's burger. Well, yeah. Burger. Listen. Only if and never saw that one yeah. as big as Kujali's hair. <laughs> oh my god. It's mm. Mm. But it would have been best if they had Rahabisab to the meat. That will oh. be super. Oh. Ah. No, no, but wait, wait. How can you uh, uh, bread Rahabisab? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Bread and Rahabisab. Boy, Rahabisab can go with anything uh -huh. couscous, burger, sawarma, shrimps, chicken in the bread, crumbs. And even tea. Oh, no, but, but, <laughs> but, but you know that nothing, nothing beats a well and a properly cooked Benachi. Hey! Pensa chapi do bang I don't, what I'm saying is, among all the things Gambians have created, <laughs> Rahabisap is number one. Yes. This ain't no public chatter. It is true that all lives matter, but do black lives really matter? Or is that just a cacophony of words? These are questions everyone needs to answer. We've been shot. We've been castigated. They've been caught, getting us mutilated, silently sidelined by the slippery slopes of no return. And so I ask, are we dying to leave or are we leaving to die? Are we crying to show remorse or showing remorse to cry? These are questions everyone needs to answer. The black skin deserves celebration and glorification. Preservation in the etchlians of our generation. This is an open secret beneath the skin of this black skin. That despite all the cries and screams, we still remain unbent, unstained, known beyond misery. Mary Beatrice Devinson Kenner, the first black woman that invented the sanitary belt. The first successful open heart surgery was performed by a black surgeon in 1893, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. The first Amer black American president, Barack Obama. The first, the, the most, the richest, the richest person in history is from Africa, Mansa Musa, the first of the Malian Empire. Catherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, Dorothy Vaughn, and all the women who served as the computers, served as the brains behind the launching of the first successful American astronaut, John Glenn. And so I ask, are black people not worthy of celebration? Are black people not good enough? These are questions everyone needs to answer. But all hope is not lost, for this is a new beginning. A new dawn, a new dispensation, a new dimension, a new branding of our existence, a toss of the bad pages of history, a new me, a new you, a new us, as we forget the past, build on the present, and prepare for the future. We need not highlight again that Black lives really matter. Thank you. Uh, America is nice. Very nice. Nice food. This is, this is, this is, nice. New, York, this is New York City. <laughs> I thought we are in Seattle. You know me? <laughs> what I'm talking about is nice buildings, <laughs> nice food, mm -hmm. nice everything. Now, right. But I miss my Rahabisa. <laughs> I you can't know, wait to go home. Guys, it's, it's, it's definitely um, a great experience yes. mm -hmm. to be in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. At least now, we can go back home to the Gambia mm -hmm. and then come back. No, we can always come back here. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what, yes. What the visa problem we have a carry many. No, there's nothing to worry about the visa. That is why we need to make best use of this opportunity. 
Let us build our networks, capitalize and develop on our business. Only then we will make this a common road. Oh. America, Gambia. Oh, you are sweet in my bones. <laughs> oh my God. Very perfect. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Come and see me almost inside the airport. Outside, yeah. Uh -huh. Inside plane. Uh -huh. Outside plane. Huh? Inside, Inside airport. airport. Outside the airport. Inside plane. Outside plane. We are very funny. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's okay. I am happy. No Take you on a journey to so many beautiful places that you've never seen. So many interesting stories to so such great places, lovely beaches that you've never seen. Let me tell you about this masquerade. The Cancun run, Ijele, Ijaza, and many more. Have you tasted your love Have you tasted your love right? This is Lumala Super Gang, this is Batanya Oh. Have you tasted your love right? So Lumala Super Gang, this is Batanya Let me tell you, Manta Musa, Thomas Ankara, Kwame Kuruma. Patik no mumba, the matter for the sad of the Jawarayo. Have you had of Mansa Musa, Nantel Mandela, Kwame Kuruma? Thomas Ankara, Patis no mumba, sad of the Jawarayo. Jamtane kaural, eh, ole Africa. Let's celebrate the Black History Month. Celebrate Black, love Black, unify Black. Move Africa, sukabe Africa, rebe Africa. Adolf Mansa Musa, Nantel Mandela, Kwame Kuruma, Thomas Sankara, Fatis Lumumba, Sada de Jawarayo. Have you heard of Mansa Musa, Nantel Mandela, Kwame Kuruma, Thomas Sankara, Fatis Lumumba, Sada de Jawarayo. Africa, Africa. Mama Africa, Africa. Sing along, we say. Africa, Africa. Mama Africa, Africa. That was incredible. Wow. Thank you so much to Bright Stars for the beautiful, beautiful presentation and, and the surprise guests. <laughs> I love every minute of it. We're almost at the end. 
Power. Need for the ambulance to go by. <laughs> Hold on a moment. <laughs> I am just one of the people who is sick of the social order, sick of the establishment, sick to my soul of it all. To me, America's society is nothing but a cancer, and it must be exposed before it can be cured. I'm not the doctor to cure it. All I can do is expose the sickness. That's from Ms. Nina Simone. And I think that kind of summarizes the the essence of the power that artists have. We can use our art for any number of things, to reveal the injustices, to reveal the realities, to reveal the, the bitter, the sweet, and everything in between. While it can be said that colonialism decimated the organic progression of Black ethnocultural development. Like a phoenix from the ashes, a creative wonderkin arose in the form of post colonial art in communities across the African diaspora. From villages to cities, from churches to concert halls, schools, universities, theaters, and galleries, Black art has captured the hearts of the entire globe, infusing modern society with its messages of ethnocultural pride, hope, resilience, and perseverance. However, the question remains, how will you use your power as an artist? Jedi Jeff, Abaraka, thank you so, so, so much.